All right. Well, we've got a good topic this evening. So believing uh, so, I think it's something that we all probably wrestle with at some point or another in our life, and that is the title is never alone. So we wrestle with loneliness, don't right. we? Right. You know, some people sometimes you can be in a room filled with people yeah. and still feel like you're alone, and that's not God's intent for you at all. Have you ever felt like that? I mean, it's maybe at some point, if you went someplace and you were new to the area, or maybe it was a some type of event, or uh, you didn't know anyone. So it's just in us to feel a little vulnerable. Especially if you're not an outgoing person. Yeah. And then if you end up having to move. You know, I was in the same house for 16 years, and then we moved. So I, I had to change schools. It was your junior year, wasn't it? Yeah, it was in the middle of my junior year. And so I had already completed half of my 11th grade year. Uh, and we were in St. Charles, Illinois. And then my mom moved us. And I was not a happy camper. But, you know, the thing is, is that you end up adjusting. Sometimes what we think is going to be a horrible experience ends up, God works it for good. And yeah, that's really the way it was for me. We would have never met. That's right. I didn't, it, it would have been horrible thinking about living my life without you. You see, he was just getting ready to kiss me. Usually, I, <laughs> usually I'll, I'll uh, try to try to uh, surprise him. <laughs> no. Um, but anyway, this is a scripture from that David. David understood what this was like. Right. To be alone and to feel alone. Yeah. He knew that God had anointed his life, but he had people pursuing him. He had people that literally forsook him. And so he, he had to learn how to lean on God and That's trust right. God. That's right. So Psalm 25, 16 says, turn, this is what David is saying. He said, turn yourself to me, you speaking to the Lord, and have mercy on me, for I am desolate and afflicted. So desolate in the Hebrew means lonely. Hmm. Afflicted means depressed. And so we know what depressed means. It means to be pushed down to be pushed down with, with force. You feel that heaviness. So he was telling God, he said, look, I'm, I'm lonely and I've been depressed lately. So, you know, it's just like what I think we all have experienced for the last couple months or, yeah, or literally, more. Yeah, it's been... You know, our world has gotten a little smaller, but yet I think we've shared, but I mean, in this way, it's getting bigger because we're getting to share with you every day. But so it's, it's just been different. But so David said, look, I need you to turn yourself to me because it, and have mercy because this is the way I'm feeling inside. And, you know, and sometimes people wrestle with insecurities. I had a friend that I remember he would uh, drive around the parking lot in a grocery store and wait for cars to yeah. start pulling out. And a lot of times he'd go to the grocery store real late at night just to avoid people because it was like he... He was paranoid with people or insecure around people. And those are all, you know, tactics of the, of the devil. And the Bible said that we're not ignorant of the devil's devices. So we need to go to God and not, you know, it's one thing to have a bad day. But man, when that depression and yeah, loneliness starts right. laying hold of you, and that those days are turning into weeks and months, and for some people, years, it's time to shake that and let God set you free. From well, it. Psalm 27 and 10 says, When my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will receive me. So mm -hmm. think about that. You're never alone. You know he's always with you. Sometimes, you know, whether it's you've had a, a loss of a loved one, a spouse, or, you know, you find yourself having to navigate life alone, you know. Yeah, and I, and so it's it is an adjustment. But there's a there's a man from our church, a precious precious gentleman. He's eighty years old. Do you know he calls us about every day, and he's determined because he he lives alone. But he's determined I'm not going to be lonely. I'm not going to be alone. And so he'll call, and he's very knowledgeable about, I mean, a lot of things. Right. And so sometimes he'll say, Oh, it's just so good to hear your voice. Sometimes that's exactly what we need. We from need someone to else to hear voice. to hear their voice. I remember years ago yeah. uh, when I was, we were married and you had gone to camp, uh, like with a church camp church with camp. children and I came home and, and I'm telling you, it was like there was a spirit that, that just tried to take hold of me and it was, it was loneliness. It was, 
It you was were like normally this, right out there yeah, with and us I, yeah, and exactly. leading and the I, pack. I had to work. I couldn't get off to go to church camp. I had to work. And it was like I, I came home, and it was like this spirit of heaviness yeah. tried to get on me. And I, you know, and, and when you're wrestling that by yourself, man, it can seem overwhelming. And I'll never forget, I had uh, my brother-in-law called me when I picked up the phone. He just said, praise the Lord, brother, how you doing? And man, when he said that, I'm telling you, I, I can't <laughs> explain what that did for me. It was just, you know, it, it broke that spirit that was trying to yes. latch on to me. And so sometimes you just got to shout hallelujah anyhow. You just need to hear someone speak into your life. And, it, and, and they may not even know they're speaking into your life. It's just, you know, when I think about the scripture said, the joy of the Lord is our strength. It didn't talk about our joy or our circumstances or our situation. He said the joy of the Lord is our strength. And so when we begin to look at the joy of God and everything that God does and how he loves us, man, one scripture said that he sings over us with joy. And yes. to, to, to recognize that, that will break that depression and that loneliness because you recognize that if God's for you, who can be against you? That's right. Well, uh, this is just coming to me out of the blue, but I, made me, when you were saying that, made me think of uh, Psalm 9, Psalms 9, uh, verses 9 through 11. He said, the Lord is a refuge for the oppressed, those that have been pushed down and are all alone. He said, a refuge in times of trouble. And he said, all those that, put their, all those that know that your name put their trust in you, and you will not forsake those who seek you. And then he says, this is the remedy. He said, sing to the God who dwells in Zion, in Zion and Amen. declare his works to his people. And so, but you know, like our friend or our brother in the church, his name is Leonard. That's what he'll do. He'll say, you know what? I'm not going to be alone. I need to talk to somebody. So he makes the call instead of waiting for somebody, for somebody yeah. else to call him. And in that moment, you don't, you feel, hey, I'm not alone. And you know what? That's the body of Christ. Exactly. You, you know, I think this is so awesome. This, uh, the scripture that says, so Ephesians 2 and 19 says, So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Everybody say household. Household there means a family. You have a family. So God refers to us as family. He's our father. Right. He's our heavenly father, but he refers to us as family. So you are not alone. And I heard this line one time, and I loved it. It says, you may not be skin to me. You may not be skin to me. You may not have my same natural DNA, but you are kin to me. Right. You are kin to me. He made us with one blood. Kindred spirit. Right. And so what he's saying is you're not alone. So we, we connect. We stay connected to the family of God. And there's something. We don't have to stay isolated. We've got to get up. And God's what, got something for us to do. One thing you, you need to remember is that whatever you're feeling, Jesus has already felt it. That's right. He, he knew what it was like he, to be alone. Exactly. He, he understood loneliness. When he was in Gethsemane and he's praying, look, he, that depression, that, that pressing down, yeah. he felt it. He's in Gethsemane. Gethsemane is, was a place of an olive press. Now, I want you to hear what I'm going to say. That when your heart stays connected to God, even when the enemy is trying to crush you, when do you understand that when you crush an olive, you release oil? Yes. And so when the devil is trying to oppress you and crush you, is what they were, he was trying to do with Jesus, that oil comes out, that anointing oil, that powerful oil. And if we liken it like the olive, it's the first squeezing that's the most valuable. It's the it, it's that it's called virgin, extra virgin yes, olive oil. And what that means you. is it's the first cold press squeezing of that. And then later they'll put heat to it and squeeze it more and get all of it out. And that but it's that first part of it. And so here's what we have to remember is that when like Jesus, when that that came and, and it tried to push him and crush him. He rose up to it, 
And all it did was release the most valuable and powerful part of him. Because when those soldiers marched into the garden and he said, who are you looking for? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. He said, I am he. And when he did, he laid them all flat on their back. Now, listen to me. He came from a place where he was feeling crushed. He yes, just told yes. his disciples, my soul's sorrowful even unto death. And very but, lonely. But, but when that crushing came, the Lord sent an angel and ministered to him. You read the gospel and you'll find out that an angel's there ministering to him. So we, we're not going to avoid the press, but the way we respond to the yes. press is going to determine whether we come out victorious or we capitulate to the enemy. And I refuse to give up. And through that, sometimes we can withdraw. You know, exactly. like I've heard you say many times that the, it's the giants that a giant isolates you just like he did David. Goliath, Send me a man exactly. to fight. Goliath's tactic was to try and isolate everyone from mm -hmm. the rest of the army. He didn't say send the army over here. He said send a man. But what Goliath could not do was isolate David from God. That's right. Because when David went out to meet Goliath, he came, He told me, he said, but look, buddy, can I put this in just plain English? Look, I ain't coming out here on my own. That's he right. Said, he said, I, I'm coming out here in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, and he's going to deliver you into my hand today. So when, when you may have some trying situations and, and you may have some... Situ you know, things that are trying to depress you and, and push you down. Don't mm -hmm. let it take you to a place of loneliness. Let That's it take right. you to a place where you reach out to Right. Him. You know, sometimes you can be, well, I mean, this is true too, that he, um, loneliness in marriage. You know, how the enemy can even isolate us from one another, even though we're living in the same house. Yeah, um, that's why communication is so that's important. That's right. Look, you don't have to always see eye to eye to walk hand in hand. You work things out. Otherwise, you can... You mean other, your hand? <laughs> otherwise, you can, you know, once again, we've talked about this before, but sleep in the same bed, on, but on the seams of the mattresses. Look, while, and it becomes a lonely place. Because you're, you're not talking it out. You're not working it out. While you're there, so we're talking about, don't move anything. So while you're there, <laughs> right there. Oh, okay. So while you're there talking about that, you know, in a marriage that, you know, that you can be lonely and that communication is so vital. There's a man in Scripture whose name is Mephibosheth. Oh wait, before you oh, go you there. Oh, you don't want me to go there. I yeah, I'm on, I, just a second, but I, because I'm going to probably forget this if I don't. Okay, go ahead. Um, I wanted to say this that speaking about marriage, that there's a scripture that says that uh, that he sets. He's a father, it's Psalm 68, 5 through 6. He's a father to the fatherless, a defender of widows, is God in his holy dwelling. And he sets the lonely, in the King James it says solitary in families, but it means he sets the lonely, those that are, you know, that you're experiencing that isolation and that loneliness. And so sets, sets there means to sit down and settle in to ambush and quiet. And so when we call out to him, we experience experiencing that loneliness or you know like something's breach and we're not we're not coming together we're not talking it out we're shutting down you know when he said i'm going to set the solitary in families yeah i mean but let's look at it he says he sets the lonely in families so yeah. you may feel like that you know that you're alone and you don't have anyone but when you come to god you get a whole new family. That's right. You get you get the family of god your your uh, your natural family may have written you off they may not have been there for you and, and, and you may have walked as a loner your whole life. Yeah. But when you come to God. Or been abandoned. He sets the lonely in families. He, he, he creates a place for you in That's his right. family. And so we become a part one body. of the we family one of God. Body. Okay, you can tell your story. Okay, then. so uh, Mephibosheth is Jonathan's son. And they had sworn an allegiance. David and Jonathan had sworn an allegiance to each other. Jonathan knew that David would be king, and he was ready to support him as king, though his father wanted to kill him. So he promised Jonathan that David promised Jonathan that he would be kind to his family and show his family kindness. Well, when the battle ensued and Saul and Jonathan are fighting the Philistines, and this is the same battle where David is sent back by King Achish, and he goes back to the city of Ziklag, and it's burned with fire. So everybody's experiencing turmoil during this battle. Saul and Jonathan are killed. When word gets to the palace that they've been 
killed the the nursemaid or the handmaid that was assigned to Mephibosheth, grabbed him up and tried to flee the palace for fear that they would, you know, because the first move as the enemy was to kill all the king's sons so no one could rise up and be a king in his place. And so she grabs up Mephibosheth, and I believe he's five years old at the time, and she starts to run with him. And in her process of trying to flee, she trips or stumbles and she falls with him. So the person that was supposed to help him hurt him. And it so, was, it was, you can imagine how she fell. It was accidental. Yeah, she didn't do it on purpose. And how many times have we been on both sides of this equation that someone that was supposed to be there to help us ended up hurting us? And so now it's hard for us to trust anyone yeah, to yeah. hold us again. That's right, that's right. And then for those that have been on the other side of that and you brought pain unintentionally, and you see the result of what it did, and you, and, and you feel so horrible about it, and you feel like there's nothing I can do to yeah. resolve this. But if what what regardless of which side of that you're on, if you take it to God, God can work it out. Right. But Mephibosheth ends up becoming isolated as a boy. His lay or his foot's broken. There's apparently a bone sticking through. And they can't set it, you know, there's there's no way. He has to dress his feet all the time. And so he grows up this way, separated and isolated, and he ends up in a place called Lodabar. And the word Lodabar in Hebrew means, it's actually two words, lo and debar, and lo means no, and debar means word. So Mephibosheth finds himself in a place where there is no word all alone. Yeah. And look, if we're not careful, what happens is when that depression hits us, we close the book. Mm. And we're not getting any word in us. So not only are we alone, but now there's no word yeah. going into us. Which is and life. look, not only does this bring us strength, it's also sharper than any two-edged sword. So it's a weapon against your enemy when you know how to use it. Right. Well, I want to go back to the dropped Okay. Once again, it can be you can be dropped on purpose, you know, like intentional or by accident, unintentional. unintentional. And so, this has, I'm probably it's probably a rabbit trail. I don't know, but anyway, I dropped something. And can I go tell it? Can I tell it? I don't know what you're talking. I about. know he doesn't. I well, know. what are you talking? About? <laughs> what? Are you, okay. No, this is a story. It made me think of this when you were talking about dropped. Okay, it's okay. Don't. I didn't say anything. I know he's he's getting worried. He's looking at me strange. Okay, well I've been I was down a... these rabbit trails before. But... <laughs> no, okay. You like to rabbit hunt, dog? Okay. No, we were in. No, I was in Trinidad. I think you're on the other part of the island, but I had to minister at this. Uh, it was like a ladies' conference, some kind of conference, and so the pastor, they had like a retirement home. You still don't know what I'm going to say, do you? <laughs> anyway, they had a retirement home. And so he was going to, because I had to spend the night, like an overnight trip. I mean, like an overnight, because I was going to minister at their church. And so they were getting ready to pick me up for the service. And I had some, I had some spare time. I had my, my message all studied and everything. And then, you, you probably don't even know about this, do you? No, I'm trying to find out. Would you tell the story? Okay. No, so so my, I looked down at my toes. I had sandals on and my, my nails... It, my polish was chipped, and I said, that looks terrible. So I happened to have my, my polish with me, and it was red. Now, when he gave me this room to stay in, he said, oh, you get to stay in the dream room. It had white tile, you know, white grout. Okay, so, you know, I, I felt uh, honored that I got to stay in that room. Well, so I thought, I'm going to paint my toes and get them fresh, you know, before I leave. And all of a sudden, that fingernail polish dropped out of my hand. Not only dropped, it went crazy. It went like four feet, I mean like stripes of red all over his white tile and the white grout. And I was like, oh Jesus, help me. So I happened to have a little bit of... I didn't know about that. Oh, I didn't tell you about that? <laughs> maybe that's why we haven't been invited. No, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I think maybe you did. I no, think. so anyway, I had this fingernail polish remover, and I was just praying the whole time because his dream room turned into my nightmare. 
Yeah. And so, but I draw, it was accidental, but it still caused the same damage. But let me tell you something, the Lord helped me. And it, it, I, it was cleaned up and you couldn't see a trace of that red fingernail polish. But I, I said all that to say, y'all like, why did you say yeah. that? Yeah, <laughs> tie it together. No. <laughs> I just kept feeling sorry for that nurse that dropped my fiddle, my fiddle <laughs> shot. Because you know, when you have, when you, yeah. you know, we don't want to cause pain for anyone. And so she caused pain, and I know that she dealt with that. But, you know, God God will help us, even if we're the ones that drop someone, Look, here, to cause them to feel lonely. Okay, yeah, tie this me, together. Not, okay. <laughs> Scoot over. No, I'm kidding. No. So what happens fix is me, this. Fix you, me. you have to understand that there are times in life that we do things unintentionally yes. that hurt people, and we don't. And sometimes we don't even know we're doing it. So you can't run from that. You have to fix it. You have to let God fix it. Just like Debbie had to fix that fingernail polish. I did. And pray God help me fix he this. Did. And so with Mephibosheth, God would not allow him to stay in that place That's where right. there was no word. So he, David sends for him. And you can imagine what's going through his mind. He's thinking, my goodness, man, he's going to kill me. My grandpa hunted him like an animal and he's going to kill me. And he brings him into the king's presence. And when he's in there, you know, Mephibosheth's looking at him and said, what does a king want with a dog like me? And he wow. looked at Mephibosheth and he said, I'm going to restore to you your father's land and you're going to eat at my table. And so when they picked him up and they set him at the king's table with the rest of the king's sons, you couldn't tell that, he, that, he that, that, that his feet were crippled because his position covered his condition. Do you understand? Seated at that table with the rest of the king's son, he yeah. looked just exactly like the rest of the king's sons because his position at that table covered his condition. That's where we're all at, folks. We've all got conditions, but the position that we took on when we accepted Christ into yes, our life, as his when children. we said, Lord, here we are, we need you, that's why he goes to Gethsemane. That's why that squeezing's happening. That's why he's willing to endure the shame of the cross, because he knows that he's going to reap a far greater reward for us. And so we don't have to be lonely. We don't That's have right. to be depressed. It's time for us to rise up and praise God for all that he's done for us, that we are not alone anymore. That's right. That's Never right. alone. Well, uh, Proverbs eighteen twenty four said, there is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Amen. And we know when we have those alone times, those lonely times, go and get alone with God. And yeah. you'll feel his presence and you'll know that you are never ever alone he is with you but also he has his family and sometimes people don't maybe they're not sensitive to that that you're you know um i always say to you know never find if you see a person alone you know in in church of course i can't wait till we could just see each other in church but yeah we've been alone here yeah. for a long time <laughs> <laughs> then you never let them be alone you you know you pull them in because of sometimes that that's a default because whether they've been dropped or they've been um, felt abandonment, you know, felt that abandonment right. or and, whatever. And, and it's, it's kind of where they just isolate themselves, but we can pull them out. Well, and, and you have to understand that a lot of times there's going, they're going to offer resistance to being pulled out because one set of hands that they had trusted hurt them. So they're afraid to allow another set of hands to touch them. Yes. So that, and I'm not talking about a physical touch, but I am, but, but I, <laughs> No, I, no, when, yeah, exactly. when, they, when they feel the touch, I've told you this before, that touch in the Greek means to leave part of oneself behind. And all of a sudden, they feel loved. And you know what? They'll come back for more. Right. Because it's so much better than lonely. They're like, okay, I, that's exactly what I need. I need to be connected to the family of God. You know, we've got Mother's Day coming up Sunday. Yes. And, and Father's Day in June. And you've heard me say over and over that you, your children can be grown and moved away and you may not even see them, but you can be a father and a mother to someone. That there, there are those that have never known a mother's love, that have never known a father's love. So why don't you let God love someone through you and show them that there's a God that cares. And, Jesus yeah, promised, right. he said, I'll never leave you or forsake you, but I'll go with you to the end that's of the right. earth. That's right. 
And so there's something we can do. You may say, well, this, you know, I'm not lonely, but there is somebody that is. And somebody that you know, maybe they're elderly and they're by themselves. You can call them, you can take them a, a pie or take them, you know, something to eat. They just need to know that they, that they're not all alone, that somebody loves them and somebody cares. Yeah, and we, I, I know we've been encouraging you to call people, you know, several times, but the truth is, is when all this lifts and people start, you know, in Missouri, it's already starting to lift. And so I went to the mall today and saw people coming out and, you know, in a restaurant and, you know, shopping again and, and getting life back to a, a more, a, 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 a gradual, a, yeah, to something that they're used to or, or long for. Yes. And what happens is oftentimes when life gets that way, we get so busy that we forget. So let's not forget. Let's, let's make a call. And that's right. Remember, they just really need to hear your voice too. Yeah. But don't, don't call after 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm they're just, probably in bed by who, what are you talking about? The elderly I'm, I'm just thinking about me. I don't like to get calls after 10. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We love y'all. We and love you. We, you going to pray for them? Yeah. Yeah. That's what I was getting ready to do. <laughs> okay. You're, you're not alone. Father, thank, thank you, Jesus. God, that your spirit, Father, is real. It's tangible. You're with us, God. I just ask, Lord, that you allow everyone watching to be able to feel your presence, God, to sense it in a tangible way, God, that you're right there with them. Lift any sense of loneliness, yes, God. Jesus. Break any depression, Father. Presence, we curse God. it, Father, and command it to go back to the pit of hell where it came from. God, you came that we could have life and have it more abundantly. So, Father, I'm just asking you to apprehend yes. every circumstance and situation and do not let it take us down a path of loneliness. Yes, Jesus. Father, I pray that even now, God, that you connect hearts and lives, Lord, and that we become, Father, a ray of light in a dark place and that we're able to help people feel your love. Now, we just ask your blessing over each one now. Keep them yes. and bless them, Father, according to your word. In Jesus' name. You know, his word says he is the lifter of our head. So lift, lift up your head. head. We lift love you all. It's going to be all right. We'll see you we tomorrow you. at 6. And right here Sunday morning, uh, mothers, we're going to have a gift for you out here when you get here. So come. Or when uh, you get ready to leave. Yeah, when you, well, I don't know. When, yeah. No, we're going to be passing it out. Okay. So. so anyway, come out, bring mama with you, and we're going to have a good time. Love you all. Right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.